Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Cadence with Checkard Chepput. We're going to talk today about changes in mixed signal verification. Checkard, as we get into multi-die systems where you have lots of mixed signal, you have lots of uh, digital logic in, in there as well, you have memory, what sort of problems are you running into on the mixed signal side? Yeah, the most important thing for the verification user is to be able to verify their chips and get their first silicon success. So when you are bringing more analog and digital content onto the same chip or chiplet or system, you are bound to see newer problems that were not reproducible in their smaller debuggable block level environments. So verification users want to get their higher quality chips with first silicon success. Therefore, they need to approach mixed signal verification with newer methodologies. Let's take a closer look. Sure. Shekhar, what are we looking at? Let's look at what happens today um, when users have to verify their chips. You have analog users in their analog environment uh, verifying their schematics using SPI simulation. And then you have digital users who are running digital simulations at a top level chip and they have all kinds of other abstractions they have to bring in like low power or verification methodologies like UVM and if they need to run any kind of analog in their digital environment they have to be able to abstract their models and, and run them at much higher speeds. Now oftentimes they still are not satisfied with the performance of these analog blocks so they actually end up black boxing analog. They tell the analog users to verify everything in their analog world and then give them a high level digital representation, which may not be accurate enough to handle all the newer challenges, like feedback between the analog and digital blocks, or newer things like verifying your chip, whether it operates in different temperatures. This is because chips are going into newer systems like automotive space medical devices. So they need to be able to perform all these newer verification tasks in a mini holistic manner. This is where they need to solve, look at, zoom out and look at the problem and solve it in a new, new way. Analog designers though traditionally have really spurned a lot of the, the EDA tools, right? They've done a lot of things even on by hand on uh, uh, spreadsheets and they've said, okay, we get to almost the same place. Do they have that choice anymore? They do not. In fact, uh, what is happening is they are perfectly happy verifying their blocks, sending them as IP into different newer environments. But oftentimes, something that works in the block level fails for whatever reason in a bigger system because some interaction between the blocks is not necessarily modeled accurately. Therefore, they get a pushback from the consumer or the user of the IP back into the producer environment where they need to zoom out and look at how their block gets integrated in a larger chip. So they need to also be able to handle some of the newer digital methodologies, uh, whether it's a system error log test bench or, or a UPF low power uh, format. They should be able to take that into their analog environment and verify their block in this bigger ecosystem. And the mixed signal designers have largely been a result of the scaling, right? Because you you want to fit something that used to be analog into maybe five nanometers or three nanometers, whatever it happens to be. Whereas the analog guys were used to functioning on whatever node made sense. That's no longer a possibility either. Now you have a, a whole mix of things that are going into these designs. That is correct. And, and these are actually now with chiplets operating, I know they are in different geometries. So you need to be able to manage all these new factors as you build your IP and make sure the IP not only is characterized in their local environment, but is able to work functionally and accurately in the yeah. digital system, which is far more bigger and far, uh, therefore needs to be verified at much higher performance as well. Is performance really the sole issue or is it complexity as well or is it both? Uh, it is a combination of both. For the digital users, they are absolutely running, trying to get every iota of performance they can. But when they do that, they do take a lot of shortcuts, especially when it comes to analog. They try to black box things, they try to abstract out. But what has happened as a trend is there is this new concept called real number modeling, which can be used to take your analog blocks and actually run them at digital simulation speeds. 
and then you have this new ingredient in your in your sauce you want to be able to use it very effectively it gives you much more accuracy than a than a digital logic a block at the same time it is much faster than a spice uh, you know simulation a spice model so you are the best of both which is now starting to you know percolate into the digital environment so that they can get both performance plus with the desired accuracy and are the analog designers now being pulled into the design process much earlier than they were in the past? Yes, as a part of the, again, the overall charter, I think the verification users ultimately have to sign off no matter who designs the blocks. So they have that very important responsibility. So they are looking at every part in the de design and verification process to see where can they improve. And that, if that means they have to go back to the producers and educate them about some of the newer challenges so that the producers can also absorb some digital content and be able to do their job in their environment and then give them a real number model, which will also enable the consumer to effectively do their job in their verification environment. How do the analog and the digital designers now interact? Does it change here? Very, very good question, actually. They need some kind of a common currency to talk between the two worlds. They are very different worlds. And that's exactly where a model like real number model plays a very critical role the analog user can actually look at analog continuous waveforms both in their native spice environment as well as the real number model that gets uh, written or generated and they can absolutely be able to hand off real number models to the digital user the digital user actually gets a real number model that's a system where a real number model that's in their very familiar environment. So they are able to take that instead of black boxing or creating less accurate models, they can take these system where log real number models and apply them in their digital environment along with all their other digital verification methodologies that include UPF, UVM, maybe even system C blocks all working well in their respective ecosystems. Now, how do they still communicate? I think they can use the real number modeling as a communication medium to get their jobs done very effectively. Does this help catch more bugs? And if so, can you do more in terms of solving those bugs? Yes, I, I think the number one reason actually this trend is picking up is because users at the end of the day, they are finding more bugs that they couldn't find before. And that is good enough for them. There is no longer a situation where somebody needs to go convince them about this methodology. Whoever has adopting them, they see value. They also see a lot of this is not throwaway. These models can be reused from one chip to the next. They can refine them. So there's a lot of leverage they can get out of each investment that they make here. So bottom line, yes, more newer bugs are found. And as a result, they are able to get, you know, first silicon success. Are they different kinds of bugs than they were in the past? So when you put analog and digital into the same design, possibly with chiplets, are they different kinds of bugs than you would deal with on a, a standard SOC? Yes, I think there are newer problems, actually, that they are trying to uncover. First of all, as they design newer chips, including chiplets, there is newer uh, feedback mechanisms and, and protocols that need to be verified uh, that in isolation cannot be done. I mean, in isolation, you could do unidirectional uh, validation or verification, but when you need feedback systems and, and signals need to travel between two different chips, they need to be able to go between the analog and digital environment and ensure the feedback is working effectively. And in this world where everything has some kind of a sensor and an intelligence that attached to it, and, and it has to happen wirelessly, you can imagine uh, the signals which are analog had to be digitized, and they have to be sampled and intelligence added. So when they have to do this, they have to be able to you know, look at newer areas that they need to verify. So it's both the combination of they are looking at newer problems, which require newer verification plans, and that includes feedback between analog and digital. And so they cannot get away with traditional approaches. They have to embrace you know, newer methodologies. You're really mixing up teams though here, and they don't necessarily speak the same language. Has that improved? Very good question. I think it is a matter of fact that people actually love to live in their environments. But what's happening is roughly, we would say, 20% of digital users, as they see this new trend, actually they get excited and curious. So they start to absorb real number models in the digital world. So I would say roughly 20% of digital users are getting more real number modeling savvy. And vice versa, I think uh, even in the analog community, I think they are realizing, hey, I cannot get my job done in my little block that I live in. 
and I see this is adding value to the end goal. The chip has to come out successfully for the entire company to flourish and, and build more chips. So they do see the value of learning some new things. So even in the analog community, I think roughly 20% of the users are actually upgrading, leveling up to these new methodologies. So it's a healthy ecosystem that's starting to form. Things like this take time to form. So this has been happening roughly about three to five years now and starting to get more mainstream. And that's exactly why we want to talk more about it and bring more awareness so uh, you know, newer problems can be solved with newer methodologies. This is no longer business as usual for analog designers, right? They really have to start embracing a much bigger picture than they did in the past. Absolutely, and, and not just analog designers, both the analog designers and the digital uh, verification users, they both see this trend and they have to level up and you know, absorb this newer methodology. And we are trying to do everything to make it as seamless as possible, right? Whether it's through standards or, or flows that you know uh, we built, uh, we want to make it as much out of the box and seamless for them to be effective in their verification uh, role. Shekhar Chetput, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity.